Hey guys and welcome back to another YouTube video. In this video I'll be going through the Sydney Swans potential drafting and how that um, how the draft is really going to play out for them. It pretty much looks like the Swans will be exclusively a night one type uh, side. One of the only few that are going to be basically them and North I think are going to be only in the night one and you're going to see them not really have to do much on night two unless something pops up that they want to use their last list spot for. Um, to get a player that is slid so far, it would have to be um, like 20, 30 slots to basically get that as they would only want to trade a future third or fourth for a guy like that um, that they probably had projected in like the 20s that is in, still available at 50, but I doubt that that's going to happen. That would be like a 1% just sort of um, shot in the dark that would happen. But anyway, so in this video, we'll sort of go through what the Swans are going to do. There is, obviously, they have their original pick. There's been trades up and down for the Swans, and obviously, it's Kenny Beats, and so he's probably going to match bids, but we're not going to talk about the matching bids just because that really depends on who's um, there at the time. And I have a general idea of what's going to happen with, like, the top 15 to 20 are sort of solid, at least the top um, 15 are sort of solid. And then from 20 onwards, you have the Ruckman and how they're going to um, go. You have like Ashton Moyer and stuff like that. And obviously you have the Caden Cleary bid, which we'll just discuss a little bit. And then I also have to bring up the fact that at the moment they can with, um, at the moment they can uh, match him up to 20, 23, but it's most likely going to fall to 22 or 21 when um, at the moment, at the start of the draft, it's 24, but most likely it's going to fall to 23 with all the bid matching ahead um but if gold coast go on with those trades that we are going to talk about later then it might turn out to be 22 or 21 that they can draft um the other guys with i mean clear with so but before we get into this video remember to like and subscribe turn the notification bell on so you don't want to upload and let's get into this video so first off this one's obviously have pick 12 and this is sort of an awkward position because obviously they want um o'sullivan is the perfect play for them and at the moment, you have the likes of basically with what I'm seeing at the moment with all the mocks and all that, it looks like O'Sullivan's going to fall around about, uh, well, one of those um, Geelong or Essendon, are most, most people have him going to one of those two. I don't think, I think Geelong picks Riley, well, I think Western Bulldogs pick Riley Sanders or um, someone, it's hard because... You know, you have Nick Watson, Daniel Curtin, Riley Sanders, and um, and sort of all in that range. And then you've got, I think, GWS are going to pick up Windsor, which is going to help the Swans out a little bit. Um, so you have, what is Geelong going to do? It sort of depends on what Western Bulldogs are going to do, which depends, obviously, because of that's draft order, what um, Hawthorne are going to do. Hawthorne, in my opinion, are probably going to draft... Um, probably going to draft Daniel Curtin, I would expect. And then that would leave um, Riley Sanders to the Bulldogs. Um, and then what are Melbourne going to do? I believe they slot in there around there as well. But the first trade that I have for the video is um, Sydney. See that in a world that uh, Connor O'Sullivan has fallen to the Geelong pick and the Swans give up pick 12 and their future pick, which is the North Melbourne assistance pick, which is pick 19 next year at the moment. There could be compensation, which I think will bring it down a little bit, but they use that pick and Geelong accept that for pick eight. And that brings us to the first prospect that we've already talked a little bit in this video is Connor O'Sullivan, a 198 centimeter, 92 keg uh, key defender. Some people are talking about using him as a forward. That's just I just don't see it. He's worked so much better as a uh, defender, and that's his primary sort of position. And I think it was just because he's so uh, so much taller than sort of those other under eighteen guys, etc. That um, in those comps that he sort of was able to use his marking ability to go forward. I don't think you'll really see that as much in the AFL level as you've got guys that are still another four or five centimeters taller than under eighteen, especially. And that's the reason why you'll see um, Conor O'Sullivan used as an intercept defender. And the Swans will want to pick him up because if you look at their depth chart, it's not the, um, I guess, greatest in the next like 24 months or so based on like ages and stuff like that for key defenders. Like 
it's not looking likely that Will Edwards for the Swans will get a new contract. Then you have Tom McCartan in the prime um, for him. Lewis Melican could easily go back to Geelong. I'm worried about that one-year deal that I believe he got uh, for next year. And then you've got Aaron Francis and Harry, um, Harry Arnold. And Harry Arnold is already uh, 24. So he's actually probably in the prime of his career. Um, when we roll around to about 12, 24 months time from now, he'll be 26, I believe. Um, yeah, he turned 24 earlier this year. And he's probably going to get another contract for the Swans after picking him up mid-season. Um, and he is on a, what, a rookie. Is he on a rookie? He's on a rookie A at the moment. So he might have to be upgraded in the next little bit. But um, I think Conor O'Sullivan will just help give that depth that the Swans really need, as they did lose Paddy McCartan. Um, brought in Hamling, but Hamling's going to be a two or three year solution in my opinion. And you've got to find that uh, Dane Rampy successor. And we really don't want um, Nick Blakey being classified as a call def- uh, tall defender, even though he's 194 centimeters. So to say that that doesn't happen, and they will try that probably again if um, Geelong don't pick Connor O'Sullivan, which could happen as they see like Riley Sanders there available, or they see another guy there available like a Windsor, maybe, if he's there, etc., um, that they could select. And they may try it with Essendon as well, who I don't think should be... Def- um, I think Essendon, honestly, should be going back in the draft towards that sort of 15 range to get Hardeman and get a future pick. So it could work with Jul- uh, with Essendon, sorry. But I don't think they will do that because they seem to love to draft tall defenders and then delist them after three or four years because none of them can develop. Um, but if the Swans were to pick at their normal slot, we'll do that. Uh, we'll do that one first, and then we'll do the uh, the tr- uh, falling back. So if the Swans would pick at their normal slot. I expect um, O'Sullivan to go because I don't expect him to get past Adelaide. He would be the perfect match for Adelaide, in my opinion, and that's where I probably have him mocked. I have sort of a mock fifteen or sixteen man draft up until the Swans because I just wanted to figure it out for this video, etc. And I've been working on it, and it looks generally pretty similar to Toomey's draft. Um, but I think if the Swans were to get to, it was to get to the Swans pick, I think with the way I have it mocked, they would be able to get um, James Leak. I think. It may depend on what Melbourne do with their second pick and what they get with their first and how that works, but I think the Swans would be able to get James Leak, who's a 187 centimetre uh, sort of utility, not really a tall defender, but can play as, a, I'm pretty sure, an intercept um, defender. Let me just bring up his uh, profile here. Um, if it will, if rookie me will allow me to bring it up, um, just on the side here. And yeah, so he's been one of the ones that has shot up the board recently. Um, he started sort of two months ago, around I would say around thirtieth or thirty fifth, in sort of that second round, early second round, mid second round pick. And shot up the board every month. He sort of went the next month, went into first round calculations around pick 20, 25. And now he's shot up to potentially going inside the top 10. I don't expect him to. I think he's going to fall in the mid, in the early teens sort of range, which is around with this one's pick. There'll be picks. I have them 16, I think there will be. I think there'll be the two top, um, there'll be. Walter, Reed, McCabe, and Croft, I think, will all go before then. I think there will be an early bid on McCabe just because, or there is potentially a bid on J.K. Rogers by the Swans themselves. But um, but I do think that Leak could easily fall to the Swans. And it says here that his basically is um, his strength or his athleticism, decision-making, marking skills, and versatility. Marking would be huge for the Swans, as James Leak is awfully similar to... Uh, Jane, Dane Rampey in his um, sort of body specs. If we look at it here, Dane Rampey is 189 centimetres and is also 89 kgs. And, I mean, Leak is a little bit um, a little bit lighter at 77 kgs, but he's going to, that's going to, uh, with one or two years of AFL conditioning, that's probably going to go up to about 85, I would say, or so. So he's going to be a little bit smaller and a little bit um, lighter than Dane Rampey, but that's like almost at the point where it's negligible. So there's that for um, James Leake. So I think that is one selection that the Swans could do at their natural selection. Um, they could also go for Ollie Murphy here. And Ollie Murphy is, in my opinion, the second best key, key defender because you have Dane... Uh, you have, uh, sorry, Daniel Curtin, who I view more as a potential, um, 
as a potential sort of midfielder in there in a couple of years uh, as he's 195 and could be just a taller midfielder and sort of has that ability more as a, um, a distributor off halfback. Um, whereas Ollie Murphy is a massive, um, like, intercept marking defender at 200 centimeters 85 kgs that's gonna his weight's probably gonna go up to early 90s to mid 90s he's probably gonna gain six or seven kgs and be at around about that 92 93 range um after being 85 um in their in the draft combine and yeah so i think he's one that um will actually be if the Swans and the Saint and the Saints don't pick him, he'll go. He'll almost fall to the second round. Well, he'll fall to twenty. Well, that's the thing because if North Melbourne end up picking Dan Curtin and he doesn't fall out to that sort of five to eight range, then Ollie Murphy probably could easily skirt by the the Swans and the Saints and go into the second round almost just because of the way the order is um going at the moment. But I think the Swans could easily just take him. He's 200 centimetres. He's a great um, intercept marker. And he has he has an ability to distribute out half back. But it's just that um, key defensive hole that the Swans have at the moment that is uh, needed to, I guess, be filled. And they could easily fill that. As the Swans, in four years' time, as I was saying, well, three years' time, 36 months to 24 months' time, they're probably going to be down to about three defender, key defenders on this list, and you don't want Nick Blakey being on that um, sort of list at the moment as a key defender. You want him as that uh, running, uh, sort of taller running def- um, b- line-breaking defender that uh, the Swans want. So then that really is the sort of picks that I would have at the Swans pick 12. Obviously, it's been touted that Will Green in Toomey's draft could... Uh, Mock could go in his Phantom could go 12 uh, which would be 16, 17, 15 to 17 range depending on bid matches I think you can get away with um, with uh, Green by dropping bound 5 or so places so there, here's where my second trade of the video um, comes in in which the Sydney Swans um, gets pick 17 and 18 from North Melbourne for pick 12 and I think that's a really good trade for the Swans because they draft, um, they get down the order a little bit and they also pick up another pick for that in which they do lose a little bit of value potentially with going pick 18 and trading it on to West Coast for pick, uh, for West Coast future second. But I think that's a valuable trade because you get future picks in what is potentially going to be a two or three Sydney Swans Academy um, 2024, it looks like, uh, depending on what they do with... um, If the Swans can persuade the boys to not play rugby, from what I've heard from initial reports, um, they've got offers from, like, the Bulldogs and stuff like that for league. Um, There could be three Swans in the top 40, 50 or so. um, That could, uh, could be next year. So having what would now be their future first... Um, 19 and 20, 21, I believe it is at the moment, because I believe um, North uh, got rid of their um, future, their second future um, assistant package pick, which was pick 20 um, to someone. I forgot which trade it was involved in, but someone else has that. Um, so the Swans would have their future pick eight, um, 19 and 21. And there is potential if Logan, Mo- uh, Lo- Logan McDonald moves, um, back to Frio that they have a future, another couple of first rounders, potentially one or two, depending on the value of those guys. So there is a potential that the Swans could finish in the finals, very highly in the finals, and have like four future first round picks or three future first round picks and a f- an early second as well. So there's that as well, helping them to match bids, but also just to get top talent. But if they were to do that, the Swans, they'd fall back to 17, which would be about 22, 21 sort of range right around that cutoff for that um for the Caden Cleary bit. So obviously they're not gonna um they're not gonna draft him with just that pick because that would defeat the purpose of 44 and 50 45 and 55 at the moment what their picks uh which would fall forward to like 43 and 47 or something like that depending on bids because you got a lot of Gold Coast. The the Western Bulldogs also have a lot of picks for Croft around that range and I believe Hawthorne have a couple of late 30s picks around that range as well. So those will all get um, taken up and basically they'll fall back one position for about 
three draft picks there. So you end up with a net gain of two draft picks for those sort of picks in the 40s and 50s. And there's about five or six, um, there's about six academy guys that need to go. So you end up going forward about, I would say, eight or nine, eight or nine picks depend on those um, on those initial ones. So there's that uh, for the Swans, which will help in my opinion. Um, so if we go to that pick 17 now, I think one guy that the Swans could actually seriously look at, and this will so, sort of go against the trend, is George Stevens, and because it's going against the trend a little bit because he is a primarily a contested um, ball winner. He's 190, 189, 101 kg, and but the thing is he's been useful off the halfback flank, so the Swans could hide him there for two or three years and then just put him in that midfield where he can be that taller midfielder. I mean, he's 189. He's probably going to grow to 191, I would expect, if he has another little bit of growth. And 191 as a as a uh, sort of taller midfielder is absolutely huge. I mean, if we look at Cripps and Bontempelli, um, Cripps is currently 195 centimetres, so a little bit taller is Cripps. And Bontempelli is, uh, if I search it up here, um, he is... 192, so one centimeter shorter, or basically the same as Bontempelli as Bontempelli. Um, if I can bring up his weight wise, I believe you'll find that he is 96 kg. So Georgie Stevens has five or so on him, but Georgie Stevens still seems to be able to maneuver around really well. So I think he'd still be absolutely fine at that um, at that weight, and it really shows. I think that he's really already built. For AFL footy, sort of like we were saying with Jimby last year. Um, if I bring up Jimby sort of um, characteristics here, Ruben Jimby uh, was picked nine last year um, and was 191 and 83 kg. So he is a lot lighter than those sort of um, bigger midfielders, but um, George Stevens is a lot heavier, obviously, at 101. And yeah, he's just, his contested game is really good. And um, yeah, his tackling, work rate, etc. So it would be good to get another sort of contested beast in there. Obviously, you do have Angus Sheldrick in there, etc. But this is sort of looking forward to when, when can we expect Callum Mills to sort of float back into the halfback sort of range and George Stevens sort of flip, uh, flip those two around and you'd still get that contested uh, beast tackler type guy that's sort of that taller midfielder, I think. Which could work in three or four, in two or three years when George Stevens is like 20, 21, 22, around that range. You also have the potential now for Will Green. As we were saying, it's mocked. He's mocked at 16 to Sydney in Cal Toomey's draft, but I sort of expect him to fall, uh, to not be selected by the teams right behind there. And if he doesn't go to um, North at 15, who I think will hunt for a. Um, will hunt for a Hardiman at 15, as they'll go McKercher and probably Curtin. I think they'll go for a Hardiman at 15, um, allowing Shizu to go forward. Um, then I think that Will Green will be safe at 17. And 17, you can draft him, and I wouldn't be too disappointed at that. 204 centimetres, 93 kg, and as a Ruckman, will be ready in three or four years to take over from uh, Brody Grundy. We've seen Tim English in the last sort of three years take over. Um, the Ruck, and he's sort of in that same build as the likes of, um, well, he is 208 and 103 kg, so he's a bit build, um, bigger body, but I think Will Green will be able to put on 6 or 7 kg and get towards that um, 100 kg sort of range, and I think he will grow another 2 or so centimetres, 2 or 3 to potentially 207, and that sort of gets you around that Tim English range, and Tim English only broke out when he was about 23 or 24 he was used early as a key forward which could happen with Will Green so I'm happy with that sort of selection of that sort of range for him I think that's right where he falls and I wouldn't mind this as I don't know I don't really rate um, Laddams too highly and I think with uh, Lockie McAndrew there could be big strides with him this year as he only started playing footy like a couple years ago but it's always nice to have at this range, sort of a, a security pick, and Will Green can fill multiple holes in the forward line and also in the ruck, and I think he will. He could genuinely be a well. He's going to probably be the top ruckman in the class. Behind, well, there is uh, Walter, 
um, is it Walter or is it Reed? One one of the two is a Ruckman. I forget which one because I don't I haven't really looked into them much because they're Gold Coast Suns players and they're going to Gold Coast. Um, well, they're academy players and going to Gold Coast, so it doesn't really matter there. But he's going to probably finish as potentially the best Ruckman or most likely the second best Ruckman in the draft class. And so yeah, there's gonna he's probably going to end up there at and still be live at twenty two. Another guy that the Swans could go for on the same page as going for Hardiman, which we will go to in a second, is Ari Schoenmaker, 194, 91 kg. And it is awfully similar that his um, characteristics to the likes of Blakey, um, Nick Blakey, if I bring up his um, sort of body type, etc. I think he's a little bit lighter. Yeah, Blakey's 196 centimeters and 83 um, kg, whereas Ari Schoenmaker is 194 and 91. So Ari Schoenmaker's probably going to end up being 5 or 10 kg um, bigger than the likes of Nick Blakey and have a good, probably be the same height as him, but I think that could be really formidable to have him there and just add extra height to the back line. Because we've had Jake Lloyd there. And Jake Lloyd, I think, is like 190 centimeters or something. Uh, let me search that up quickly. Um, he isn't tall, <laughs> um, if I bring it up here. Jake Lloyd, at the moment, is 180 centimeters. So adding another 14 to 16 centimeters there will be absolutely huge in Ari Schoenmaker. I really like the look of him. And we get him the year before Tazzy comes in. We get him on the secondary contract the year before Tazzy comes in. So if they... Um, as I believe he is a Tazzy um, product here. Let me just double check this before I uh, go on a little bit. I believe he's um, Tazzy. He's an ally, which does mean that he could be. Um, and yeah, so I think he could be absolutely uh, crucial. Yeah, Tazzy in the Col Colts League. So in the Colts League. So yeah, he'll be um, his Tazzy product. And I really think that with him being the year before, we can get him on a, um, after year three on a, another big deal before Tazzy enter the league. He could be hunted by Tazzy, um, in the first couple of years and we trade him for multiple first round picks or something like that. So there's that, um, down the line if we needed to get rid of him. But I think that, um, yeah, he could be a good one to just grab up as he's one that could really complement and sort of take over from Jake Lloyd or potentially Harry Cunningham, etc. And he could play tall, but I don't expect him to play tall. I just expect him to distribute. And him and Nick Blakey and the Swans love a big left footer. Um, so there's that. And then the last guy that I have is sort of on the same mould as... Um, as the show and maker is Riley Hardiman. I would probably have Hardiman over show and maker as most mocks do, but um, I still really like Hardiman. 185 centimeters, 75 kg, and more of that distributing defender, as we talked about with the show and maker. So I would really like to see uh, the Swans potentially go after him at that pick 17, which would be pick 22, 23 sort of range as I think he could really take over from Jake Lloyd. As we have Vickery there, I'm sort of indecisive about him, and it sort of will show how Kenny Beatson and the Swans uh, scouting team sort of view Cooper Vickery after a year. If they do get another guy that's sort of there, maybe they're planning for Harry Cunningham, but it would most likely look that they're trying to... Maybe they stuffed up with uh, Cooper Vickery, but I don't think they did. I think he's looked all right. Um, but if we do get another running defender, maybe they just, maybe they didn't get that right. And maybe they're trying to gloss over that quickly. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if they don't go for Hardeman and they go for a tall, taller player as we sort of did get stuffed over with injuries to the taller guys. And I felt like we were probably one guy short in the, def in the defense sort of area for taller. And, you know, uh, Will Green could obviously help just with a backup developing Ruckman and help with the forward guys, etc. as we could see movement there as one of probably Amadi or Buller. It's sort of a breakout year for one of them this year, I think, that's going to have to, they're going to have to do it or they might not get another deal. And that sort of brings us to the last guy, which has been known for a while, Caden Cleary, and he's a 182 centimeter, 79 kg sort of midfielder, would add sort of that very, very similar to Sheldrick type of vibe and that's why you might see the likes of um, Stevens not get selected by the Swans, just because he is a sort of same build as, well, same sort of game as Cleary. So unless you want to sort of shift out, um, unless you want a midfield of Rowbottom, Cleary, and Stevens, which could be a very, very 
slowish midfield, but a very, very contested midfielder, midfield, sorry, um, then they probably won't go um, Stevens. But I think Stevens is still there as a defender because he could actually still play defense. He's shown that in, I believe, Nationals as well as um, Coates League or whatever he's played um, over there. Um, so that's why Cleary, most likely what I see happening is um, Gold Coast trading, I believe, 24 and 26 to um, the likes of, um, I believe one of them is to, Rich, uh, not Richmond, um, let me try and find where it is here. It might take me a second to figure this out where it is, because I know that um, the AFL Trade Hub, shout out to them, they did a um, they've been on top of all this, and I'm just trying to scroll down quickly um, to get to it because I know that they reported it yesterday. Um, one second here. Man, he's posted a lot of stuff here. Um, nope, they don't need that. So here we go. Gold Coast let, uh, looks set to bolster their draft points um, haul earlier with impending bids on early on Monday night with Brisbane picks 30 and 39 and Frio 34 and 36 that are for 24 and 26. And those um, sliding back further to get more points um, will mean that two draft picks go instead of one. And yes, there is like a rounding issue that there's potentially... Um, points um, overflow from those that will mean that they get more picks etc etc but it should in essence um, account for two draft picks um, gone instead of one with the Jed Walters pick etc as they'll pretty much have all of the 30s and 40s um, draft picks them Western Bulldogs and Hawthorne so all of those get knocked out um, basically and the Swans get another a couple of draft picks up which could see the Swans be able to match at 21, which would basically hold off the, um, in my mind, would hold off the um, GWS cheeky bid of, um, uh, oh, at um, Cleary, at what is um, going to be around the mark that he would be able to be matched, um, as we don't really want to see him um, get at 16. I think the Swans could almost, uh, 16, they would need all six of the guys to go. They would need the two goal, uh, the four Gold Coast guys, Croft and McCabe, I believe, to go to be able to match at 22 with the impending Gold Coast trades. I think that would match them at 22. They might be able to get at 21. So that would basically cover off all of the... Um, all of the potential hijacks of GWS doing it in in the bounce back from Harry Ralston last year. And I think they would, if they did trade for North Melbourne stuff, I think they would put in a clause with North Melbourne that they do not select Caden Cleary, um, as that would sort of just defeat the purpose of what the Swans are doing, as they'd be picking at uh, the pick behind that. And obviously you do have GWS potentially just picking it to get rid of that... Um, that pick of 17 for the Swans, which would suck. Uh, but I think the Swans would find a way. And I think GWS need um, other guys than a midfielder, to be honest with you, with their midfield being one of the better ones last year, I believe. But yeah, Caden Cleary should be coming to the Swans. Um, and yeah, he'll be coming anyway, whether they go into a draft deficit or not. Um, and a 182 centimetre, 79 um, kg um, midfielder will be good to see him come to the swans and then i don't have the graphics up with me because i was sort of focused on a national draft but if this, what the swans are going to do in the rookies quickly here in about two minutes is pick one um i don't know which order they'll do it but uh one pick will be sam reed we know that they've said that they delisted him to put him back on the rookies and upgrade um fox to get that three pick minimum there um, and then the other pick will be the, um, probably, I suspect, if they don't go green, it will be May. But if they do go green, I suspect it will be Kabor from the Swans. They're both Swans Academy guys, and I think they'll do that just because they can put them on the Rookie B or whatever, and that's that, etc. And that'll leave the Swans at most likely, I have it, um, 36, um, 30, what did we say, 36, 6, and 2, I want to say, or... Sorry, no, 36, 5, and 2, I want to say, and leave them with one slot open for mid season or whatever, where they probably again will draft another key defender because that's what they're doing at the moment is trying to top up through mature age guys. And I think that's a, a valid way of doing it. But anyway, that pretty much sums up the whole video today of what the Swans are going to do. A very, very long video. Um, I didn't want it to go necessarily 30 minutes long, but that's what it's gone for. And hopefully that gives you, as Swans fans, sort of an insight into what they will do. 
and how the sort of draft will play out for the Swans perspective and how that I really don't see them doing anything in the second day of it because Caden Cleary is most likely going to go 25-26 which will be um, a pick before the end of day one so that'll be their draft done by the end of day one um, and night two they might not even bother showing up but anyway that is the video and I'll see you guys in the next one bye guys